Hi everyone, and welcome to a new video. I know, I haven't really, you know, filmed in quite a little bit. Um, I, I think my last video was before I started school, which I started school last week, so... Yeah, it's been about a couple weeks, and I really do apologize for that. I have just been getting used to my schedule for school, and just my overall routine with things, because things have changed, and... You know, now that I'm back in school, I kind of need to get used to my routine and such. So, we're back. She's back. <laughs> um, and I'm really excited to be back. I really want, I've been so excited to, you know, get back into the, you know, Spring Into Action series. And I have a bunch of other videos coming out soon as well. Um, I'm also uploading a new video to my tarot reading channel. So if you want to check that out. Uh, check out my spirituality channel for that new video coming up soon. I'm actually uploading it the same day that this is uploaded, so make sure you're subscribed there. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to get back into filming. I've missed it, honestly. And if you want to check out my new life updates and just uh, overall things going on, check out my art channel. Subscribe to it. I'm going to be posting a new video on Thursday. Um, or... Wednesday. I'm sorry. It's posting it tomorrow. Um, and it's going to be all about pretty much my life updates while I do as like a vo voiceover while I do some trippy artwork. So that should be really cool. But today we are going to be talking about cleaning your environment. I feel like that this is such an important thing, especially to do now while we're all still in quarantine. Um, and or in, you know, in this new normal, I guess you would call it, of being at home a lot and, you know, unless you have to go into work, um, and just this new kind of way of doing things. And I feel like a lot of people, especially my family, have been cleaning out our environment. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit as we go through this section, but I designed the cover page as I do with all of my you know, cover pages in this workbook. I decided to do a little house with some swirly designs, but I also wrote in some key words whenever I think of cleaning. So like doing the dishwasher, organizing, sweeping, swiffering, deep cleaning, vacuuming, dusting, all those words, including yard work, decor, daily chores, and seasonal cleaning. I just think of those um, whenever I think of cleaning your environment. So let's get into today's section. If you do have the workbook, feel free to pause here to fill out your section, or you can even just listen to the video while I go through everything and fill out your uh, cover photo here. So let's get into this. So this little section, I drew a little house that says clean your environment, so cute. And it says your environment equals your energy. I really do believe that and that's why I included this in the workbook is pretty much your environment is your energy. If you're living in a very messy environment, you're most likely going to feel very, you know, cluttered and feel very, you know, messy and feel very just out of place. And so with this, your energy equals your energy, uh, your environment, excuse me, equals your energy. Um, this is definitely true in my case. With my bedroom, I try to do my best to keep it clean so that I have a clear, clean mind um, so that I can get the stuff done that I need to. And another thing to uh, do to, you know, your environment equals your energy is to dedicate certain rooms in your house or even just your bedroom, selecting different sections of your bedroom to specific habits like reading in the living room or filming your videos in your office or only sleeping in your bed. That way your body is regimented to think of that area as, all right, it's time to go to work or it's time to go to sleep, or it's time to read, or it's time to work out, like whatever the case may be. So as an example, I drew out a couple of the rooms in my house, uh, just quick little sketches, pretty basic <laughs> illustrations, I didn't do too much detail, but I feel like that this would be something that, you know, if you're not the most artistic person, I feel like that this would be something to kind of reference from to make for yourself. So it says on this page, draw out the rooms that you most use in your house and dedicate habits for those rooms. So for me, there are three specific rooms in the house besides the kitchen and like the eating area. I just think of like that as like a more communal area. So, and living room as well, but these three rooms I always go to on a daily basis. 
bedroom, living room, and my porch. So bedroom is definitely number one. I am in my bedroom most of the day because it's my favorite room in the whole house. I've customized it the way that I want and you know I just work really hard on my bedroom to make sure that it's in an energy flow that I am able to relax but also I get work done in here because this bedroom half of it is like my office and the other half is more of just like a bedroom so like as you can see here the hallway which is that way um the door is that way in my room because we're in my room right now this is like my work school office type area over here um so i mainly focus on artwork i focus on schoolwork, and i focus on just other work stuff like um finding you know life coach opportunities as you guys know i'm a therapeutic or life coach now and trying to find jobs and such is kind of hard research um going on skillshare to do classes on there i haven't been doing that much because i've been so focused on school but i also do a lot of my artwork here i do my tiktok filming here this is just the place i just do work related things yes i will have my computer open sometimes to do you know video calls and meetings and zoom meetings and all that that is all here anything related to that is in this area and then i have a part of my room that's my dresser and my clothes so for this it's more of like you know i make sure that my dresser has my xbox and it also has my tv near it um and it also has my other little tv that's for vhs movies so that is where I like to, you know, relax and watch videos. Um, I play my Xbox in that area. It's more of like this half of my bedroom, which is behind me currently, is my relax zone. It's my, you know, my bed is for sleep and relaxation. I have my books next to it if, if I want to read uh, in my bed. Most I haven't been doing that recently, but I do want to. <laughs> um... And also my clothes rack is right next to my dresser, so it's also where I get ready. So it's like a typical bedroom where I have like a TV, two TVs at that because one is a VHS TV. And then I have my bed to just focus on relaxation in this part. While this part of my room is more get shit done, get artwork done, be creative, and just be inspired. That's what I think of it as. So maybe try to do that with your room. Have half of it be for work stuff and school and artwork and the other half be for just relaxation. See if you could do that, that's my challenge for you. My other two rooms here are more communal as my the, my parents and whoever comes over like my sister, my brother, they like to go in these rooms as well. But I have dedicated my own habits into these rooms along with it, realizing it's a communal space. So the living room for example. Um, this is definitely the place where my mom likes to watch TV, my dad watches TV in here, we have family gatherings in this room, but if no one else is in this room, usually in the morning, um, I like to drink my coffee because now my dogs are regimented, my dog Henry always, as you can see with this arrow here, always walks into the room to try to see if I'm going to sit on the couch and he likes to snuggle next to me every single morning. And then Teddy, my other dog, will come in, go on the couch and look out the window. So that's just been their little routine after they, you know, go outside, get a drink of water, drink, uh, eat some food or whatever. They like to relax with me. Um, so that's why I've dedicated my living room as like the place where I drink my coffee. Unless, the only exception to that is if I have class. On Mondays, I like to bring my, you know, coffee upstairs and I will get ready for class. But every other day that I don't have class, which is every day except Mondays, I will always drink my coffee in the living room to spend time with my dogs. And also it's just family time. Like if I'm in the living room, I know that I can still be on my phone and just like relax or whatever. But it's also me being in the communal areas to, you know, spend time with family, spend time with my parents, etc. So, and then lastly, my porch. So my porch is kind of a rectangle shape, as you can see here. Um, you kind of have to walk in and out here to get inside my house, and you walk in and out here to get outside or go back into the porch. 
And these four little squares I have here are the rocking chairs that we have on my porch. And we also have a little bench right here. And then these are all windows, so I just mapped those out. So the three things I allow myself to do out here, or that I plan to anyways, that's why I kind of did this spread for myself, is I want the porch to be a place where I can read meditate and do artwork because the sun at nighttime and in the morning is so nice on that porch that I feel like it's a perfect place with the rocking chairs and everything to read and meditate and just you know zen out really and that's why I love my porch so much so try to figure out three to four rooms I mean I was gonna do four but I kinda messed up here so I did three do three to four rooms in your house and try to dedicate certain habits to those rooms and then what you can do is you can declutter those rooms to make room for those specific habits. It's a really cool concept. I love it. Let's move on. So the next little section here talks about pretty much um, your dream living space. So right here at the top it says display items that define who you are in your living space like Artwork on your walls if you like to paint, or a clothing rack if you like fashion, or bookshelves with books on it where you want to read. So this is just a little tip of how you can incorporate those habits. So like for me, I have a lot of my spiritual and just overall artwork all over my bedroom to help me stay inspired and also I try to put as much of the relaxation paintings near my bed while the other ones are around my desk so then it helps me stay inspired. Also, I'm not huge into fashion but I do have a clothing rack because I love seeing my clothes out and it also, you know, I don't have a closet so it's just more space for me but if you're into fashion maybe have like a specific clothing rack for you to put out your clothes for the next seven days or two weeks or whatever um, so that they're all planned out, especially if you're like an Instagram person to plan out outfits for certain photos or whatever. Um, and then bookshelves with books on it where you want to read. I mean, I have uh, my books right near my bed as like an option where to read, but if I'm not feeling it near my bed or um, it's not time to relax yet and I do want to read, like I said, I have my porch to go out and read on. So I'm still getting fresh air, but also at the same time I'm still indoors um, and relaxing. So this little exercise here is write slash draw out your dream living space. So this is your way of manifesting whatever dream living space you want to. So as an example, I'm going to share with you guys my dream living space. For example, I always and will always, you know, manifest this. I really want a tarot and spiritual space somewhere in my future home. <laughs> somewhere. I don't care if it's just like a part of a room or if it's a whole room dedicated to it. I don't care. I need a space to do my spiritual rituals. That's definitely something on my, you know, list of what I want to include in my future home. I also want a dedicated art studio room and filming room because, well, I do do film videos for YouTube, but also I want it to be a space where I can do my artwork. Um, and then I want an indoor swing. I know that sounds weird, but not like those wooden swings where you're just like, you know, swinging back and forth. I want it to be a comfy sitting chair, either like on a porch or even you know, in the house somewhere where there's a lot of sunlight so then I can read in it. So I can have a place where every single day I go there to read and that's the purpose of it. Or just to sit down and relax with my future pet in the future, whatever. Um, I do want a big backyard, especially for like my future kids and stuff, but also I just love having a big backyard. Not too big where it takes like three hours to mow the lawn or something, but um, I mean, hey, if that happens, it happens. But I just picture a big open big yard where there's a pool and you know possibly like stuff for the kids and stuff but for me just having a big backyard where I can go out meditate I can go out and you know play around with the dogs or the kids or anything like that that's like my ideal vision I want a cottage style home so I don't know if you guys follow Megan Hughes here on YouTube but her house I love the style of it. It's very oaky, very, 
you know, indie-esque and the fact that it's like a really homey, comfortable space, that's my ideal. The house that I'm in right now is fine, it just gives me like city feels because I'm so close to the center of my town. I really want to be in a cottage style home where I can just be out in the middle of nowhere and have my own space and have the peace and quiet. You know what I mean? I've just been so used to being next to the center of town, but also the houses I live in are really next to each other. My boyfriend can tell you, like, they're literally right next to each other. And it can get annoying sometimes because, like, I want to have that space to just have a home and not have to be right next to my neighbors. So, yeah. Enough about that. I do also want a garden for flowers and vegetables because I want to grow my own vegetables that I enjoy, but also I want to have flowers. Oh, and I forgot to also add that I want to have like herbs and stuff for, you know, essential oil stuff and homemade skincare products and stuff like that. And I want my bedroom to be focused on relaxation. I want it to be focused around just a zen environment to go to after dealing with the kids or dealing with family or dealing with over life over all life stress I want it to be a place of relaxation that's all I want I don't care how it looks I just or I want it to be clean obviously but it'll be a place of relaxation and lastly I would love it would be so cool just like in Beauty and the Beast not as big though <laughs> obviously but like it'd be cool to have just a dedicated room as like our own personal library in my home like for like it has kids books it has books for me books for my future husband and everything like that like that would be super really dope um so yeah just kind of write out your dream living space and see how you can incorporate that dream living space into your current living space so like for example i really want you know the tarot spiritual space I include a lot of spiritual artwork and I have a dedicated space where I put my crystals and my singing bowl and stuff like that um, so see if you can try to do that that's another challenge for you um, and then this is our last page here but give away clothes and items donate sell and have a giveaway hand-me-down so what are some items in your house that you can give away so for me something like my top three right now are the stuff underneath my bed. Uh, there's a lot of stuff underneath my bed like old computers and stuff like that that I want to get rid of. Some old clothes of mine that just don't fit anymore I want to go through that. Um, stuff like that. But also the third floor stuff. We had a lot of stuff on the third floor but we already cleaned it out. So that was a huge project that me and my family did over the course of this quarantine was cleaning out that third floor of all the old junk and kid stuff that we used to use that we don't no, no longer use and just cleaning it out and it's now it's just like a clean space up there but now my sister's moving in so all of her crap is gonna go up there but you get my point um it was just a nice project to finish now my last little section here which everyone can do is a technology clean out this meaning like your phone, your computer, your iPad, maybe even your Xbox if you want to clean out some of the games that you have. But for me, it's more of like my phone, computer, and iPad. So uh, for your phone, you can clean out the apps that you have to clear up storage. Uh, also photos to clean up storage and just old photos and screenshots that you took, that you accidentally took, that kind of a thing. Um... And then social media, going through your social media and unfollowing people that you're just not inspired from anymore and also just not, you know, you don't really look at their content anymore or something like that. And then your computer, cleaning out your files, your photos, videos, and going through your bookmarks. I know I use bookmarks a lot on my Google Chrome web browser for school and for just other things that are just links that I go to all the time so make sure that your bookmarks uh, bar is organized and it's actual links that you use on a daily basis or that you need to refer to in a, in the in your current time I can't even talk huh um and then lastly here do a tech clean out monthly and write your routine here so for me personally like with the phone just unfollowing people I just don't resonate with or too toxic or whatever 
photos, going through photos, and app organization, clearing out apps, figuring out a way to organize my apps on my phone, that kind of thing. Computer. Um, so like organizing your files, cleaning out to your computer of like, you know, the photos and, you know, videos that you don't no longer need, that kind of a thing. And also cleaning out your email. So important. I do this as much as I can. I need to do it, um, soon for myself, but cleaning out your email just gives you a fresh start. Having designated folders for, you know, school, church, uh, work, whatever you do, um, just to have clear folders so then when you do get mail, you can move it to those specific folders or get rid of it. Um, and then your iPad, if you have an iPad or a tablet, it'd be nice to organize apps as well. Delete photos, unless you have it connected, which I have my phone and iPad connected, so once it deletes off my phone, it also deletes off my iPad. Um, and also clean out saved items. So for me, on my iPad, I do a lot of, you know, artwork on there and digital stuff, so if there's, like, something I no longer use, I can delete it. And that concludes the clean your environment section. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this section. Next week we will be talking about cleaning your schedule, which I am so excited about. I love planning and just creating routines and such. So I'm very excited about that section. And then after that, there's only one more section, which is clean your emotions, which is a very, very important topic, especially with mental health. So I hope you stick around for the next two weeks to finish off this series um but i hope you did enjoy this section go make your monthly routines your weekly cleaning routines clean your environment because your environment equals your energy i will see you guys all in next week's video and make sure you check out my other two channels bye everyone